Okay, so uh, I've imported uh, those three uh, sets of vegetation. There's one more, uh, which is a kind of hedgy kind of thing, which I'll let you figure out how to add yourself. Um, and now, uh, sort of the last thing related to this sort of scattering of woodland uh, is if we just kind of have a little look inside here, this woodland, we can of course, of course see that these trees are uh, currently just spawning on grass and they're not really impacting or influencing the terrain around them at all. So we want to address that. And to do it, we're going to hop back once again into Houdini. And we're just going to set up the outputs of this subnetwork that we've created. So I'm going to go ahead and create this subnetwork here. Uh, oh, no, not the subnetwork here. Sorry, we've already got an output zero, but we also want to set up the other output. So we're going to copy that output there. And we're going to wire that one in here. There we go. And then we're going to copy it once more. So now if we hop outside and look at our subnetwork, we have these three outputs containing all the scatters. And I'm sure that you can guess what we're going to do now. If we take a look at the previous example where we were working on the paths, you can of course see that we've done some, uh, both some modifications to the terrain height field, uh, but more importantly, uh, we've created these kinds of uh, masks, which have then driving the color of the terrain. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing now. We're going to uh, do some sort of influencing of this terrain here. And the way we're gonna do that is we're going to use a node called height field, mask from or mask by points there it is the left input is going to be the height field and the right input is going to be the uh, the points and of course as per usual we're still currently visualizing the color so we need to do a quick height field visualize we need to go ahead and make sure there's no change to the material and we're using default tinting and then we don't want to add the mask we oh look we only have the option to add uh, or subtract the mask. So I'll fix that so we can replace it. But for the time being, we're going to go ahead and do a height field mask clear. So we're just getting the outputs of that mask. There we go. So quite simply, this just allows us to sort of set a distance from each tree that's uh, going to cause the terrain to take on a, sort of a new new, new tone or a new, a new color. And uh, actually what we want to do is we just want to combine all of these, uh, all of these woodlands here we've just added. Of course, you could go further and you could sort of separate them out and make each one have its own uh, have its own ID map and its own mask. But for now, this will do. OK, uh, so we're, we're going ahead and we're adding all of these things and we can set the uh, the mask to be sort of sharp like so and uh, decrease that. It's going to give us a, a much sort of a more, uh, you know, crisp mask. But I actually think I quite like the uh, sort of softer masking effect that we get if we do something like this. OK. Maybe something like that. So now there's going to be a gradual gradient coming out from each tree. And then we can put down a, uh, let's just go with a height field tint in this case, um, rather than trying to do a whole material for now, although you obviously could uh, bring in some nice leaves or sort of undergrowth kind of textures. So we're going to have a look at the height field tint. And we're going to go ahead and darken it. Okay, so that's a little bit strong. Um, so if we're just going to darken it a little bit, a little bit like so. Okay, maybe that's a bit strong still as well. But I think I think that's uh yeah, it's definitely too strong actually. Uh, maybe we don't want to go completely, completely to black town. Let's just do a sort of dark undergrowthy kind of greeny brown. And we can increase the strength a bit. Maybe brighten it up a little. Okay, so yeah, we're actually introducing some different colours to the terrain here. Some like uh, sort of maybe fallen leaves or needles uh, kind of undergrowth. Yeah, I like that. That's good. That's good. Um, Bit less, a bit more grayscale. Okay, so that's us influencing our macro texture. But you know, you could actually skip this step. I think. I think more importantly, uh, what we want to get from that mask is we want to go and influence the ID map, so we can scatter some leaves or debris underneath all the trees. So we're going to call this woodland mask, like so. I'm going to put down an um, object merge. I'm going to wire that in. Go over to our ID map workflow. I'm going to call this ID map uh, step A. Okay. And now the step after this is uh, where we're going to do some work. And the reason we're sort of splitting it off into its own separate uh, like output is because the work inside of the woodland, woodland subnetwork relies on this ID map not changing. Otherwise, the result from there will change too. So we're sort of breaking this into a subsequent step. Uh, we can go ahead and copy the trails layer though and copy that down 
It's going to hit escape to stop it from cooking while I've copied it because I don't need it to cook yet. We go. I'm going to call this woodland layer. Okay. And then I'm going to go up to our ID map layers. Of course, we're going to add one more layer, which we're going to call woodland. I'll make this uh, sort of a slightly different shade, maybe, maybe, maybe even a kind of more browny brown. Okay. We wire in the output of ID map A into our left input and our woodland mask into the right input. And of course, we're going to set this to woodland. And now let's have a look. Okay, so we're seeing uh, some splotches on our terrain um, around about where all of our trees are. And we can expand those splotchy regions by increasing the threshold here if we wanted to. But I think I'm going to leave it pretty, pretty small, pretty tight around the base of each tree, like so. Okay, so now we've tinted our terrain. Uh, if we have a look down here, as we go, we've tinted our terrain with some uh, with the kind of weather woodland is. So we can wire that in there, and uh, we can go ahead and export out both of these new layers. So, yep, we're just going to go ahead down to our height field output, and we're going to save the color texture to disk. And finally, we're going to go ahead and save out the ID map as well. Now we're going to hop back over to Unreal. Oh, that was a bit bright. Just go back to our landscape folder. So materials, landscape, textures. We'll re-import both the color and the uh, and the ID map there. Okay. And if the terrain looks a bit weird, uh, you remember what happened when we imported the paths? It's because we need to go to our landscape material. We need to increase the number of ID map layers to seven. There we go. And then lastly, we just need to go to the layer parameters and add one more layer. And the way we're going to do that, drag in the landscape layer like so. And then drag on the blend asset like so as well. All right. Then in the blend asset, we need to just increment that by one from the previous layer. So six, because it's the sixth layer. And then in the layer asset, we're going to do the same thing. So that to be the sixth index. And we should see now we get this sort of brightly colored splotch on our terrain. And uh, what we just need to do now, this last last thing, is we're going to go uh, to our texture array, of course. And we're going to fill it out with one more set of textures, which is going to be the... Uh, the sort of surface underneath where the trees are spawned. Now, because I haven't specified whether it's going to be a conifer woodland or going to be a uh, broadleaf woodland, I'm not going to set up multiple layers. And in fact, I'm not going to use a leaf texture. Uh, I'm just going to use a kind of generic uh, woodland ground uh, texture there. Drag that onto index six. And there, we should now be able to see that we're getting some uh, some new materials assigned underneath our woodland. And if it's, uh, if it's a bit patchy, I'm gonna hop back over to Houdini. We can just increase the visibility of that layer on the terrain. So I'm gonna pump it up a bit too high for the time being. Back to Unreal. We'll just uh, make sure we re-import the ID map. There we go. And uh, yep, that, that sort of like Default texture is what we're getting from the other channels. So we need to fix that up. We also need to fix the sRGB setting as uh, once again. And then we'll just wire in the accompanying textures to the normal map and to the masks texture. All right, so now we can save those uh, texture arrays and admire our work. Okay, so uh, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll uh, catch you in the next one.